Hello, I'm the Reminiscence Reviewer. I remember it so you don't have to. And Leonardo DiCaprio finally got an Oscar! One of the internet's biggest phenomenons was DiCaprio's inability to score an Oscar. It was hard to browse a social media site after the Oscars each year and not see a joke about it. And this makes sense. DiCaprio was and is a fantastic actor. So him not receiving an Oscar for any of his roles until now baffled people. He's been in tons of movies, and one of his most famous roles was as Gatsby in The Great Gatsby. A lot of people have at least heard of this movie, and that's because it's a great adaption to F. Scott Fitzgerald's classic. However, the 2013 movie wasn't actually the first film adaption of the book. Yeah, way back in 1974, director Jack Clayton, a British director famous for adapting books to movies, took a stab at telling the story of Gatsby. I'm not really sure why it's never talked about, because it was a financial success, and it's definitely on par with the 2013 adaption by Baz Luhrmann. And we're here to compare the two today. Welcome to Old vs. New. Remember, this is all based on opinion, and of course there are going to be tons of spoilers. Considering how impactful the original book was, let's first take a look at how effective the movies are. First up is Best Story. Both movies were directly based on the book of the same name by F. Scott Fitzgerald, so their stories are going to be about the same. The biggest thing we're looking for here is how well they presented the story. And the 2013 adaption does a fairly decent job. The juxtaposition between the rich and poor, and how the rich treat the poor, which was the whole point of the book, it's all there, it's just... Well... We're different. I am... They are... She is. We're all different from you. His mistress and wife an hour ago, so secure, were both slipping from his control. This movie explains everything! And I mean everything! Every single plot point is analyzed within the movie, and it always sounds really forced. I found myself saying multiple times throughout the movie, you didn't have to explain that. We could see that through the actors. It also explained every bit of the story long before it was relevant. Nick explains Gatsby's backstory right after Gatsby reunites with Daisy. How is that relevant? And honestly, I could deal with that if it didn't ruin the climax of the movie. When Tom confronts Gatsby in front of Daisy about being a phony and a bootlegger, we as the audience aren't as invested, because we already know the truth. Part of telling a good story is keeping a balance between keeping the audience in the dark and revealing the plot at a flowing pace, and Lerman's adaption doesn't do that. The 1974 version presents the story in a much subtler tone. The writers let the movie speak for itself, and while some of the stuff is talked about, it's much less in your face about it, and it happens much less frequently. And while we're talking about subtlety, another issue I have with the new version is how it starts, and how its story is really told. The movie immediately starts off with Nick, the narrator in the book, and our view into the world of Gatsby in an insane asylum. Why? Don't get me wrong, after the events of Gatsby, I'd go to a sanitarium too, but why was that necessary to show us? The story is shown to be told as Nick telling this to his doctor, but again, why? It doesn't give us any insight into the main characters, and only really serves to flesh out Nick, who didn't need to be fleshed out. He was interesting enough without showing him needing mental help. It's like the writers were saying, you have to feel bad for this character and you'll like it! But we'll talk about that later. Continuing on subtlety, it's very clear that the movie was shot with 3D in mind. And as with most 3D films, it's not subtle. And it's kind of distracting. The excessive use of CGI is also pretty distracting, although it did make Gatsby's parties look much grander, and allowed for quite a number of interesting drive scenes compared to the original. But that again took away from the conversations that took place during those scenes. Overall, the new Gatsby was far too preachy and in-your-face, and didn't give the audience the time to think for themselves, while the 1974 Gatsby kept within the spirit of the book. Point goes to old. Next up, it's time for Redford vs. DiCaprio. Let's see which movie had the greatest Gatsby. Okay, I think you all know where this is going. Yeah, despite how good Robert Redford did as Gatsby in the 1974 version, I'm not going to beat around the bush at all in saying that DiCaprio did a much better job. Both capture the feeling of longing and internal struggle that Gatsby is going through, but for some reason DiCaprio's performance moved me much more. It definitely has something to do with his reveal as Gatsby. 
his wide smile, the fireworks going off in the distance. That image is one that will never leave my mind, and never did as we see Gatsby roller coaster from depression, to joy at reuniting with Daisy, to slowly slipping into madness when he realizes that he didn't really get what he wanted, that he can never relive the past in the same way. I think the biggest thing that makes DiCaprio's performance better is that there's so much more distinction between when he's putting on a front of happiness versus when he's alone with Daisy. He seems like he actually enjoys himself and cares about Daisy, and it's clear that Daisy doesn't feel the same way he does, and is just putting on airs. Redford sort of achieves this, but the distinction between Gatsby's front of happiness and his real happiness is much less, well, distinct. Point goes to new. But what's a romantic drama without a good romantic lead? Time to see which Daisy will bloom the best. <laughs> oh, be quiet! In the new movie, Daisy was played by Carrie Mulligan, and it was an absolutely stunning performance. From the first words that came out of her mouth, I knew I was going to love this iteration of Daisy Buchanan. Carrie does a great job of presenting Daisy as a woman who doesn't know what she wants, but also knows that she loves her husband despite everything. I think the scene that really makes her performance for me is when Gatsby is showing Daisy and Nick around his mansion and starts throwing his shirts at her, trying to impress her with his wealth. You start to see Daisy enjoying herself for the first time in the whole movie, laughing and marveling at Gatsby's shirt collection, when suddenly she starts crying. The scene always gets me, because it's the first indication to the audience that Daisy isn't as stable as she lets on that she's feeling immense amounts of remorse for leading Gatsby on while still loving Tom, but doesn't know how to tell him, and it's all done with a lot of subtlety on her part. Although, the script kind of ruins it by having Nick narrate her inner turmoil in that moment. This same moment is not done nearly as well in the 1974 version. The setup is exactly the same, but something about Mia Farrow's performance was just… not right. Her character is played much more over the top, and it just didn't work. Daisy needs to be played as much more serious and subtle in order to be effective. She's going through some pretty serious stuff. To be fair, I sort of see where Pharaoh was coming from with Daisy almost always being super cheery, even when she was trying to stop a conflict between Gatsby and Tom when they first meet. It's just not clear in the old movie that Daisy is feeling uncomfortable with all of it, but in the new movie, that it was the exact vibe I got. Carrie Mulligan managed to find that happy medium of putting on a front and starting to let it slip as the scene went on. It worked very, very well. Point goes to new. But what are good leads without good supporting characters? Let's take a look at which movie had the best supporting cast. Now, both movies had the same supporting roles. Tom, Daisy's husband, Nick, our narrator, Jordan, Nick's love interest, and Myrtle, Tom's lady of the night. Let's start with Tom. In both movies, Tom is absolutely deplorable, for all the right reasons. He's cheating on his wife, he's a racist, he beats his lover, I know I don't like the guy! But at the same time, he needs to be somewhat likable, or at least pitiable, in order for the ending to be effective. And I feel like both movies do this equally well. In the old movie, Bruce Dern does a great job of playing the man who doesn't care about what the poor do and just wants to... Where did that come from? The same goes for Joel Edgerton, who played Tom in the new movie. They both look the part too, that's one thing I really applaud these movies on, their costume design. Every single person looks like they belong in America's Jazz Age, and Tom also gets the honor of having a creepy mustache. <laughs> Overall, I can't give the better Tom to either movie, they were both spot on. Nick, on the other hand... Unfortunately, Nick in the new movie really falls short, and not because Tobey Maguire did a bad job acting, it's just the writing for him is atrocious. When he's just playing the character in the scene, it's fine, but Nick is the biggest defender of analyzing every single plot event. His mistress and wife an hour ago, so secure, were both slipping from his control. Gatsby looked in that moment as if he had killed a man. We get it, Lerman. You read Psychology for Dummies. Can we move on? Jordan, played by Elizabeth Debicki, is the same way in the new one. She only exists as a way to dump the plot out for the audience, which isn't necessary. Anyone paying attention will understand what's going on without you explaining it. This movie also really overuses flashbacks, it's super distracting. In the old movie, the plot was revealed really smoothly, and none of the characters were reduced to plot dumping. 
I genuinely cared about Nick and Jordan and how all this was affecting them. Then we come to Myrtle, who in the first movie is very well explored, as is her relationship with Tom and her husband George. We can see her struggle with wanting to be something more than a poor mechanic's wife, which is why she's with Tom, but it's also clear that that will never happen. Myrtle in the new movie is kind of shafted, with almost no development devoted to her. We don't see her and Tom being together all that much, or Myrtle and her husband George struggling with George finding out about the affair she was having. It's super rushed. I don't know, she just wasn't as interesting in the new movie. Overall, the old movie had better supporting characters. Point goes to old. Now it's all tied up. This final round will decide which movie comes out on top. Let's take a look at how effectively the imagery was conveyed in each movie. Both movies make it pretty clear which symbols are important. The green light, the TJ Eckelberg billboard, each symbol is given some time in the spotlight. However, like with everything else in the new movie, each symbol is explained before the audience has time to think about it for themselves. Especially the green light, which is supposed to resemble Gatsby's obsession with Daisy, and how his one dream is now obtained and now he doesn't know what to do. But that's explained almost before it happens in the new movie! Gatsby and Daisy are sitting together, Gatsby looks at the green light, and Nick starts rambling on about how his number of enchanted objects have diminished by one. Possibly it had occurred to Gatsby that the colossal significance of that light had vanished forever. Now it was once again just a green light on a dock, and his count of enchanted objects had diminished. I won. We can figure that out ourselves, just give us a chance! Same with the Echo Bird billboard. Nick Elwright says in the beginning of the new movie that the sign was like the eyes of God! That's supposed to be for the audience to figure out throughout the movie! Give them something about the story to talk about after the film besides how bland you were! Man, that Nick guy was a windbag! No kidding! That Jay-Z score was good though! Yeah, I was surprised! The old movie, once again, is much more subtle about it. They point out the symbols and make it clear they're important, but they let the actors convey how each symbol changes and what it means, especially the billboard. When George sets off to go find and kill Gatsby, who he thinks murdered his wife, he starts looking at the sign and muttering apologies under his breath. That's really effective, and from that, the audience can figure out what the sign is supposed to mean. To be fair, when the new movie does imagery right, boy does it do it right. When we first head off to the Valley of Ashes, there's a moment where we fade from a view of the Buchanan House to a silhouette of free men mining. It gives really good contrast between the rich and poor worlds. I wish it could have just been that instead of Nick telling us about the symbolism while it happens, but the effect is still pretty chilling. And Gatsby's parties, as I mentioned before, really use the CGI to their advantage. They look massive, and there's so much going on that it really drives home how much effort Gatsby is putting into attracting Daisy. This makes the scene where Gatsby reveals he doesn't much care for parties that much more effective. Unfortunately, those are the only two moments I can think of that the 2013 Gatsby did well, and the 1974 Gatsby did them just as well with what they had at the time. So overall, the old movie was much more effective with its imagery. Point goes to old, which means old takes the win this time. But does that mean that I didn't like the new one? No, because despite the subpar writing, I actually really enjoyed it. When it's effective, it's really effective. It just wasn't as consistent as the old one was. The new one had great moments, and in some ways was better than the original. But overall, to the original goes so you don't have to.